let's continue on the sample problems for the analysis of T beams. Still, this is for the reinforced concrete design. So, for our sample problem number one. So, from the plan shown, GB-6 has a dimension of 300 mm by 450 mm and is reinforced with 4 diameter 25 mm bars single, uh, single layer at about the mid span of this beam. If this beam is to be analyzed and the surrounding beams have a dimension of 300 mm by 500 mm, determine the following. So note the beams and slabs are monolithically casted, then F prime of C is equal to 27.6 megapascal, FY is equal to 420 megapascals, and T sub S, or the thickness of the slab, is 120 mm. We use diameter, 20, uh, diameter 10 mm stirrups for... Uh, all the beams and the concrete clear cover of GB-6 is 40 mm. So we are to determine the effective flange width, the depth of the compression block, and the ultimate moment capacity of the beam. So ito yung floor plan natin. Then sabi din dito sa drawing, yung cross section ng columns natin is 300 mm by 500 mm. So Kung paano siya oriented dito, ganun din yung dun sa uh, plans natin. So, para isolve natin yung given problem. So, sabi dun sa problem kasi natin, ang kailangan natin i-analyze is yung GB-6, which is ito. So, ibig sabihin, that is nandun sa interior or siya yung interior beam. So, sabi din dun sa problem na yung cross section is nandun siya sa or yung cross section na may given reinforcement na apat na diameter 25 is nandun sa gitna or up just about the mid spot. So, ibig sabihin, kakat natin siya at section AA. So, the resulting diagram will be this one. So, since supported or sumusupport siya ng slab on its left side and a slab on the right side. So, for this one, ayan, single layer reinforced siya ng 4 diameter 25 mm. I-disregard natin lang yung nandun sa ibabaw kasi uh, kinapitan lang siya ng stirrups. So, tension reinforcement lang yung uh, ibibigay natin. Kasi, kaya tension reinforcement to, since just about the mid-span, alam naman natin na sa mid-span, yung ganitong beam na supported by columns, uh, alam natin na at mid-span, positive yung moment niya. So, for a positive moment, ibig sabihin nakangiti yung moment diagram natin. So, that means uh, compression at the top, tension at the bottom siya. So, we consider this one as a tension reinforcement. Then, sabi sa problem, uh, sabi niya dun sa problem, we have uh, a thickness of slab of 120 mm. So, ibig sabihin, this is 120 mm. So, that is 120. Tapos, uh, sabi din niya, we have a base of the beam na 300 mm. Then, 
the total height of the beam, so yung H natin yun, is 450. So ngayon, ang pinapahanap sa atin una, yung B sub F or yung B sub E. So syempre, we will use the table coming from the NCP. So since mag-fall tayo on a flange location of each side of the web, so that means we are going to use or we are going to get the lesser of 8H, SW over 2, and LN over 8. So, B sub F, so, doon muna tayo sa 8H. So, B sub F, sabi natin, since dalawa yan, or two sides yan, or two side of the web yan, so that means, B sub F should be BW plus 2 times 8H or 16H na siya. So, that will be BW plus 16H. So, determining that one, that will be B sub F is equal to 300 plus 16 times 120. So, that means this will be equivalent to, so that is 300 times or plus 16 times 120. So that will be 2,220. So this is 2,220 mm. So that is the first effective flange width based on the thickness of the slab. So the next one is, uh, will be SW over 2. So, mapapansin natin, ang SW is ito. So, yung clear distance to the next web, ito yun yung clear. Yan. Kasi sila yung next web. Kasi pag cross section natin yan, so, kung i-cross section natin to, mas magpo-produce ka ng cross section, let's say B, B, uh, ang magiging itsura niyan, will be ganito. So, ito yung i-analyze mong beam. Tapos, meron ka dito. So, yan yung i-analyze mo. So, yung SW, ito. And, mapapansin natin if this is also SW. Kung mapapansin natin dun sa given, pare silang 4.5. So, meaning equal. So, we can say that B sub F now is just equal to BW plus 2 times SW over 2 since equal yung webs niya. Or, equal yung 2 sides of the web niya. Pero, sabi din naman din sa problem kasi, ah, uh, Lahat ng beams or surrounding beams has a dimension of 300 mm by 500 mm. So, ibig sabihin, ang ibabawas natin dito is same 300 and dito rin is same 300. So, that means mag-equal pa rin. So, magiging valid pa rin tong formula natin. So, meaning this will be BW plus SW. And let's determine what is SW. Sabi natin, SW, since clear distance yan, ibabawas lang natin yung, since ang given sa atin is center to center distance, which is L, ibabawas natin yung 4.5, or ibabawasan natin si 4.5, so that is 4,500, minus, minus yung, uh, dimensions ng beam or yung base ng beams. Pero, di ba, syempre, nandun sa kalahati. Kalahati nito, kalahati nito yung ibabawas natin. Eh, since pares lang naman yan. Pares ng dimensions. So, ibig sabihin, maminasan lang natin ng 300. 
So, that will be 4,200. So, this will be the clear distance to the next web. So, that means B sub F now will be equivalent to 300 plus 4,200. So, this will be 4,500 mm. So, yun yung isang B sub F. Then, last B sub F now will be based on LN. Yung LN over 8. So, si LN sabi natin, manggagaling siya dun sa clear span nito nung mismong beam na i-analyze natin. So, sabi nga natin clear span, eh, ang support niya is a column. So, ibig sabihin, kung ang support niya column, so, that will be, may, meron ka dito, then, beam yan, tapos supported siya kay by column kasi, so, ganyan. And since center to center yan, kailangan natin ibawas yung dimension ng column. Eh sabi naman, lahat ng column is ganito yung cross-section and oriented siya as is dun sa plan. So, ibig sabihin, nakatay yung paganyan. So, ang ibabawas natin kailangan is yung kalahati ng 500 sa kabila at kalahati ng 500 sa kabila. Kasi, ang dimension niya is yung 500. So, that means, kunin muna natin yung L or yung L sub N. L sub N is equal to, so, ang span length natin is 4,000 minus, ibawas natin yung dalawang uh, 500 over 2. So, meaning, 500 na rin yung ibabawas natin. So, this will be 3,000. 500. So, that is in mm. So, yun yung ln natin. Then, we can now say that b sub f is equal to so, that will be 300 plus or bw muna. So, that will be bw plus dalawang ln over 8 which corresponds to BW plus uh, that will be LN over 4. So, that is 300 plus 3,500 divided by 4. So, B sub F now will be equivalent to so that will be 300 plus 3,500 divided by 4. So, that is 1,175 mm. So, sabi ni Code, choose the lesser of or the least of the three. So, the governing value will be B sub F is equal to 1,175 mm. Ito ngayon yung Effective flange with. If we are going to sin ah uh, to solve or analyze this beam, since nakuha na natin yung B sub F nya or effective flange with, we will always start with getting the value of the area of the concrete. So this will be done by the equilibrium equation C is equal to T. So, that will be 0.85 F prime C AC is equal to AS FY. Since we say that steels are yielding. So, kunin natin what is AS. So, AS will just be equal to Apat na diameter 25. So, that will be 4 times pi over 4 times 25 squared. So, that will be 
So that is 625 pi. So since nakuha na natin si AS, so kunin natin si AC dito. This will be AC is equal to AS FY over 0.85 of F prime C. So that will be 625 pi. Then, that is FY is 420. So that is 420. Then, divided by 0.85 of 27.6. So, the value of the area of the concrete is equivalent now to... So... Divide natin 625 pi times 420 over 0 0.85 times 27.6. So that is a value of 35,000, 35,152. 917. So, this is in mm squared. So, yun yung area ng concrete natin. Yun, paano natin malalaman kung lumagpa siya dun sa thickness of slab o hindi? So, kunin natin yung area ng flange. Yung area ng flange will correspond to yung BF natin or yung effective flange width and yung thickness ng slab. So, that will be 1175 times 120. So, this will be equivalent to 1175 times 120. So, that will be 141,000. This is 14100mm squared. So, as we can see, uh, AC is lesser than AF. Therefore, A is lesser than T sub S. So, ibig sabihin, yung ina-analyze natin is andun lang sa ibabaw. So, eto lang siya. Andito lang. So, yung pinapa-analyze natin is nandito lang. So, andyan lang siya. That means, andyan lang yung depth of compression block. So, if we are going to use now or get now what is the theoretical value of A. So, gamit lang ulit tayo ng equilibrium equation. So, to get the theoretical value of A, that will be C is equal to T. So, that is 0.85. F prime C. So, A times BF tayo ngayon is equal to AS FY. So, we can say that A is equal to or A theoretical. So, A theoretical. So, A is equal to AS FY over 0.85 F prime C, B sub F. So, that will be 625 pi times 420 over so, that is 0.85 F prime C is 27.6 times B sub F is 1175. So, we can say that A is now equivalent to that will be 625 pi times 420 over 0 0.85 times 27.6 times 1175 so the value of A now will be shadow siyang mababa that is 29.9 then, 
we get the value of C by dividing A over beta 1. So, yung beta 1 natin dito is equivalent to 0 0.85 since yung M prime C natin is lesser than 28. So, that will be 29.9167 divided by 0.85. So, that will be equal to 29.67 divided by 0.85. So, that is 35. 35.1961. 1.961 mm. Yan nga yung value nung si natin. So, para malaman natin if these are true or actual values. So, kunin natin yung formula ni Fs, which is 600 times D minus C over C. So, kailangan din natin i-determine si D. Si D is determined through D is equal to, so, syempre, bawas natin yung 450, bawasan natin yung 450 o yung height ng beam, i-minus natin yung clear cover, which is 40, so, nandito pa lang tayo. Tapos, minus din natin. So, nandito pa lang tayo nun. Minus din natin yung diameter ng bar. So, or stirrups. That is minus 10. Tapos, punta tayo sa gitna ng bars, which is minus 25 over 2. So, ang D natin is equivalent to, so, that is 450 minus 40 minus 10 minus 25 over 2. That is 775 over 2. So, substitute natin kay F sub S. So, that will be 600 times 775 over 2. 775 of minus that is 35.1961 divided by 35.1961 So, ang value ng Fs natin ngayon will be equivalent to so that is 600 times 775 over 2 minus 35.1961 over 35.1961 So, that will be 6,005 6,005.1961 8455 which is greater than FY therefore still yields then we can say that these are true values of uh, these two computed values or theoretical values are the true values of A and C so, ang pinapahanap ko sa atin, depth of compression block. So, since na-prove natin that steels are yielding, so we can say that this one is the depth of the compression block. Procedure is to get the nominal or kailangan na natin kunin yung nominal moment capacity ng beam. Pero, bago tayo magpunta doon, kailangan muna natin determine ano yung reduction factor na gagamitin natin for this beam. So, kailangan natin gamitin yung net tensile strain o hanapin yung net tensile strain ng beam. So, the net tensile strain is equal to 0 0.003 times D sub T minus C over C. So, since D sub T yung hinahanap natin, eh, single layer lang yan. So, we can say yung effective depth niyan is equal din dun sa D sub T. So, that will be equal to 0 0.003 times DT is 775 over 2 minus yung C natin is 35.1961 divided by 
35.1961. Ito ngayon yung net tensile strain, which is equivalent to, that is 0 0.003 times 775 over 2 minus 35.9161 divided by 35.1961. So, that is 0 0.03029. So, this is far greater than 0 0.005. Therefore, ductile then the reduction factor is 0.9. Ngayon, to determine the value of the nominal moments, so, syempre, papasok doon yung tatlong methods. So, let's solve this one on using the first method whereas, hahatiin natin yung beam into components na. So, yung first component is ito which is BF, tapos kailangan natin si H, tapos meron ka dito ASF. Yung second component niya will be yung ah, uh, sorry, ang magiging component lang para niya since para siyang rectangular at hindi natin na-prove na uh, singly siya, uh, na-t-beam siya. So, ibig sabihin para lang siyang analysis ng singly na meron kang A tapos B, F yung nasa ibabaw. Then, ang gagamitin na is 0.85 F prime C. So, pwede din nakunin natin siya mula dito sa ilalim or mula dun sa tension or enforcement. So, to get the nominal moment capacity, that will just be equivalent to AS Fy, since steels are yielding, times D minus A over 2. So, that would just be 625 pi times 420 times D. D775 divided by 2 minus 29.9167 divided by 2. So, multiply natin to by 1,000 squared. Or, divide natin siya pala by 1,000 squared para maging kilonewton per meter. So, that is 1 over 1,000 squared. So, that will be a nominal moment capacity equivalent to 625 pi times 420 times 775 over 2 minus 2 to uh, 29.9167 over 2. So that will be divided by 1000 squared. So that is 307 point 2232. That will be 307 0.2232 So, that is in kilonewton meter. Ngayon, makukuha na natin si ultimate moment capacity which is multiply natin to by 0.9 yung MN. So, 307.2232 So, the ultimate moment capacity now is equal to 0 0.9 times 307.2232 So, that will be 276.5009 This is 5009 kN meter Ito na ngayon yung ultimate moment capacity ng TV. Kung gusto nyo siyang kunin dun sa compression side, pares lang naman yung ilalabas niyang uh, MN. So, try nyo na 
that is mn is equal to 0.85 f prime c is 27.6 times bf is 1175 times a is 29.9167 Tapos, yung moment arm niya is 775 over 2 minus 29.9167 over 2 times 1 over 1,000 squared. So, MN now is just equal to 0 0.85 times 27.6 times 1175 times 29.967 times 775 over 2 minus 29.9167 over 2. So, that is divided by 1,000 squared. So, ang lalabas pa rin is 307.2232. So, yun yung So, yun yung Sagot pa rin for the nominal moment capacity. So, this is nominal. So, ganun yung analysis ng T-beam kapag uh, rec nagiging rectangular uh, or na-prove siya as rectangular analysis lang. So, let's proceed to sample problem number 2. So, a reinforced concrete TB must the following properties. So, B sub W is 250 mm, H is equal to 500 mm, T sub S is equal to 125 mm, 125 mm, B sub F or the effective plunge width is 550 mm. Then, the beam will be reinforced with 5 diameter 28 mm tension bars at the bottom. And we will use a diameter 10 mm stirrups and the concrete clear cover is 40 mm and F prime C to be used is 20.7 mega, uh, megapascal and the steel yield strength is 420 mega, megapascal. So you are asked to determine the following using all the NCP 2015 provisions. So first the area of the concrete for compression the actual steel stress, and the ultimate moment capacity of the beam. So for our solution, so at first, we will be needing to identify, so since indicated that we should use all the NCP 2015 provisions. So, we should identify if yung 5 diameter 28 mm tension bars at the bottom will be sufficient as a single layer. So, let's check, uh, let's check the spacing. So, for the spacing, so, S now will be equivalent to B minus dalawang concrete clear cover minus dalawang diameter ng stirrups minus kung ilan yung bakal times diameter ng main bar divided by N minus 1. So, the spacing now is equal to B is 250 minus dalawang 40 minus dalawang 10 minus limang 28 divided by 5 minus 1. So, that will be S is equal to That is 250 
minus dalawang 40, minus dalawang 10, minus dalawang 28, minus uh, divided by 5, minus 1. So, that will be 2.5. So, that is 2.5 mm. 2.5 mm. So, this is lesser than 25 mm. So, therefore, hindi natin pwedeng gawin na single layer lang yung bar natin. So, let's try two layers. So, tatlong reinforcement tatlong diameter 28 sa first layer then dalawang diameter 28 sa second layer so ibig sabihin ang check na lang natin kung kakasya yung tatlo sa baba kasi kung kakasya yung tatlo sa baba malamang kakasya yung dalawa na nasa taas so that will be So, that will be S is equal to 250 minus dalawang 40 minus dalawang 10 minus tatlong 28 divided by 3 minus 1. So, the spacing now will be equivalent to 250 minus dalawang 40 minus dalawang 10 minus tatlong 28 divided by 2. So, that will be 33 mm. Then, since ang gamit pala nating bakal is 28, so, i-compare natin siya sa 28. Kasi that, that is the higher. So, that is greater than 28 mm. Therefore, okay. So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong 2 layer of reinforcement. Uh, tatlong diameter 28 sa first layer, then dalawang diameter 28 sa second layer. Then, para sa given na to, so, for... Uh, coming dun sa nakuha natin na spacing, so ito na yung magiging illustration ng beam natin. So, meron tayong effective flange width na 550. Tapos, meron tayong total height na 500. May thickness of slab or thickness of flange na 125. May base of web na 250. At ito yung 2 layer na reinforcement. So, from the code din kasi, sabi, yung spacing between the, the first layer and the second layer should be a minimum of 25 mm. So, ang gamitin na lang natin will be minimum of 25 mm. Pero, si, sa actual site condition, ang ginagamit dyan is kung ano yung diameter ng bakal. Kasi yun yung ginagamit na spacer between the two. So, let's say 25 mm yun. So, for our given, syempre ang una natin kukunin, ano yung concrete area for compression. So, makukuha lang naman natin yun through the equilibrium equation, C is equal to T. So, that is 0.85 F prime C, AC is equal to AS, FY. So, let's get what is AS. So, AS will be equal to, so, AS is equal to 5 times pi over 4 times 28 squared. So, that will be equivalent to 
So that is 980 pi. So this will be 980 pi. So yan nga yun yung AS natin. So to get AC, so that will be AC is equal to that is ASFY over 0 0.85 F prime of C. So that will be 980 pi times 420 divided by 0 0.85 times 20.7. So, AC now is equal to, so that will be 980 pi times 420 divided by 0 0.85 times 20.7. So, that will be 73,491.306 pi. 4 mm squared. Yan nga yun yung concrete area for compression ni o yun nung ano natin nung beam. So, para malaman natin kung analysis of rectangular yan or analysis of AT beam, kailangan natin kunin si area ng flange. So, the area of plunge will be the base of the web or the base of the flange which is dapat kunin natin yung area kasi nito. So, kailangan natin makuha yung area na to. So, para makuha natin yan, that will be 550 times 125. So, 550 times 125 mm. So, that is 68,750. So, that will be 68,750 mm. So, yan ngayon yung or mm squared. And yun yung area ng flange, which we can prove that AC is greater than area ng flange. Therefore, A is greater than the thickness of the slab or small letter H. So therefore, analysis siya ng or analyze as AT beam. So, makukuha natin siya as an analysis of AT beam. So, we could use either method 1, method 2, or method number 3. So, for this sample problem, let's try to use the method number 1. Since we have proven that this is an analysis of AT beam. So, ibig sabihin, gagamitin natin yung equilibrium equation of C1 plus C2 is equal to T. So, C1 will correspond to this diagram. So, itong diagram na to yun. Ito. Then, C2 is galing dito sa diagram na to. So, si C1, ito siya. Then, this will be C2. So, alam natin that this will be a value T sub S. So, ibig sabihin, that will be, C1 will be 0.85 F prime C. Then, that will be BETS or BFTS. Plus, C2 natin is ito, which is 0.85 F prime C. So, that will be BW times A minus TS is equal to 
A S F Y. So, yan nga yun yung uh, values natin for getting the actual value of A. So, the actual value of A now, or the theoretical value of A will just be equal to, so, substitute natin yung values. So, uh, that will be Zero point eighty five. F prime C is twenty point seven times B F is five fifty times T S is one two five plus zero point eighty five. F prime C will be twenty point seven. B W is two fifty. Then that will be a minus t sub s is one two five is equal to nine eighty pi times four twenty. So coming from this equation, we would get ah uh, in nine eighty pi times tang four twenty. Siyempre, ito, ta-transpose natin to papunta dito. So, magiging minus siya. So, that will be minus 0.85 times 20.7 times 550 times 125. So, yun nga yun yung equation. Then, di-divide natin yung sagot dito. So, that will be divided by... 85 times 20.7 times 250. Then, ah, yung value ng a will be plus 125 kasi may 125 sa loob niya. So that's it. So 125. So that will be a is equal to 143.5. So, that is in mm. Then, C will be equivalent to A over beta 1. So, kung mapapansin natin ng f'c natin is 20.7. So, ibig sabihin, uh, ang beta 1 natin is 0.85. So, yung beta 1 natin doon will be 0.85. So, that will be A. So, 143.9652 divided by 0.85. So, the value of C will just be equivalent to 43.9652. So, that will be 169. 169. Point three seven zero eight. So, para ngayon makuha natin yung para makuha natin ngayon kung tama tong values na to. We shall use FS, which is six hundred times. D minus C over C. So, syempre, kakailangan natin dun yung D. So, kailangan natin ng kunin yung D para ma-check natin kung tama ba na still sealed or still yields dun sa given natin. So, para makuha natin si D, syempre, two-layer yung reinforcement mo dito. So, syempre, kailangan natin kunin yung centroid niyang beam na yan. So, or nung reinforcement na yan. So, kunin natin yung centroid ng reinforcement mula dun sa pinaka-bottom nung reinforcement. Yun yung gawin nating Y bar. So, we 
will use the Varignon's theorem. So, that will be y bar will just be equivalent to 3 times pi over 4 times 28 squared times yung centroid mula dun sa baba. So, that is 28 over 2 plus 2 times pi over 4 times 28 squared. So, yung centroid neto, papunta dito, will be 28 over 2, tapos yung space pa sa pagitan ng dalawang bar, which is, let's say, yung sinasabi ni code na minimum na 25, plus 28 pa na the bar. So, that will be 28 over 2, plus 25, plus 28. So, that will be for the second layer divided by the total area of the bars, which is 980 pi. So, y bar now will just be equivalent to so 3 times pi over 4 times 28 squared times 8 over 2 plus 2 times pi over 4 times 28 squared times 28 over 2 plus 25 plus 28. So, answer divided by 985. So, that is 176 over 5 mm. Then, yung effective depth natin will just now be equal to 500 minus 50 or 40 minus 10 minus yung y bar is 176 over 5. So, the value of t now will be minus 40 minus 10 minus 176 over 5. So, that is 2074 over 5. Over 5 mm. So, ito ngayon yung effective depth. So, ibig sabihin, Fs now is equal to 600 times the effective depth 20 or 2074 over 5 minus yung value ng C natin kanina from the previous calculation. So, 169.3708. So, that is 169.3708. So, divided by 169.3708. So, the FS value now will just be equivalent to 600 times 2074 over 5 minus 9.3708 divided 169.3708 So that will be FS is 869.4387 So that is greater than FY therefore still yields So tama yung value ni A and value ni C for uh, uh, for this example, so, ang true values is yung nakuha natin kaninang theoretical values. Tama yung nakuha nating values kanina. So, ibig sabihin, yung A, actual na natin, will be equivalent to yung previous na nakuha natin which is 143.9652 so that is 143.9652 tas yung C actual natin so that is C actual will be equivalent to 169.3708 So, ito ay yung i-actual. So, pwede natin nang kunin yung area of the concrete 
for compression. So, that will just be AC is equal to that is BETS plus uh, BW times A minus TS. So, that will just be uh, 550 times 125 plus BW is 250 times 143.9652 minus 125. So, that will be AC now is equal to, so that is 550 times 125 plus 250 times 143.9652 minus 125. So, that is 73.4913 divided by 10 mm squared. Yan ngayon yung area ng concrete natin. So, ito ngayon yung A. Tapos, yung actual steel stress na hinahanap sa B, siya yung FS. Kanina na nakuha natin, which is 869.4387. So, 869.4387 megapascal. At yung sagot sa A, then this will be the answer for letter B. So, last will be for the ultimate moment capacity of the beam which is to be, uh, ang gagamitin ulit natin is yung method number 1. So, ngayon, bago natin isolve yung nominal moment capacity ng beam natin, kailangan ma-determine muna natin yung reduction factor niya. So, the, to determine the reduction factor, kakailanganin natin yung distance from the extreme tension reinforcement to the compression or the extreme compression, uh, compression fiber which is D sub T. So, kukumpitin natin si D sub T through uh, babawasan natin yung height which is 500 minus yung concrete clear cover na 40 minus 10 minus kalahati no diameter ng bar ng first layer, which is 28. So, ngayon yung D sub T natin is equivalent to 500 minus 40 minus 10 minus 28 over 2. So, that is a value 436 mm. So, yan ngayon yung D sub T natin. So, from this D sub T, makukuha natin si net tensile strain, which is equivalent to 0 0.003 DT minus C over C. So, pag sinubstitute natin yung mga values, that will be 0 0.003. Yung DT natin is 436 minus yung value nung si natin kanina which is the actual C is 169.3708 so that is 169.3708 divided by 169.3708 so, that will be equivalent to 0 0.003 times 436 minus 169.3708 divided by 169.3708. So, net tensile strain will be equivalent to 0 0.004 we can see that 
this is lesser than 0.005. Hindi niya na-meet yung ductility requirement, pero greater pa rin naman siya ng 0.004. So, this is still acceptable, but we are in the transition zone. Therefore, yung fee natin is not equal to 0.9. Kailangan natin ngayon compute yung value ng fee. Makukumpute natin yung value ng fee through the graph. So, let's say, sabi dun, this is 0.65 for other members. Then, this is 0.9. Itong axis na to is axis for a value of fee. So, dito, axis for the net tensile strain. Tapos, meron ditong E sub Y, which corresponds to FY over ES. Then, 0.004, tapos nandyan si 0.005. So, dito si 0.005. So, this is axis for the net tensile strain. So, sabi, kapag nandun ka sa strain y still you have a fee of 0.65 pag yung 0.9 naman yung fee that is far greater than or equal to 0.005 ibig sabihin ganito yung graph then linear yan papunta dito so ang kailangan natin hanapin since halos nandito tayo kailangan natin hanapin what is fee for this side So, kakailangan natin, kakailanganin natin yung equation of the line, which is y is equal to mx plus b. So, madali lang naman hanapin yung m, which is the slope. So, that is just rise divided by run. So, rise will be 0.9 minus 0.65 over the run of 0.005 minus yung e sub y. Si E sub Y natin, siya si FY over ES. So, ang FY na given natin for this sample problem is 420. So, that will be 420 divided by 200,000. So, epsilon sub Y will be equivalent to 420 divided by 200,000, that is 0.0021. Then the slope now will be equivalent to 0.9 minus 0.65 divided by 0.005 minus 0.0021. So the value of M now will be equivalent to That is 0.9 minus 0.65 divided by 0.005 minus 0.0021. The slope is 2,500 over 29. So, meron na tayong slope. Para makuha natin si y-intercept, let's set y as 0.9 and x as 0.9. 0.005 So, substituting to the equation of the line, that will be 0.9 is equal to 2,500 over 29 multiplied by 0.005 plus B. So, the value now of B will be equivalent to Si 0.9, mamainusan natin itong 2,500 over 29 times 0.005. So, that will be 0.9 minus 2,500 over 29 times 0.005. So, the value will be 68 over 145. So, this will be 68 over 145. So, we can create an equation for the reduction factor equivalent now to Slope is 2,500 over 29 times the net tensile strain plus 68 over 145.
So, yan ngayon yung equation natin for the reduction factor. So, that the reduction factor now will be equivalent to 2,500 over 29 times 0 0.005 or multiplied by, since epsilon na yung kunin natin, ito, that is 0 0.004 723 plus 68 over 145. So, the reduction factor will be equivalent now to 2500 over 29 times 0 0.004723 plus 68 over 145. So, that will be 0 0.8761. So, that will be the reduction factor now for this beam. Now, kailangan na natin kunin yung nominal moment capacity no beam natin. So, syempre, ang nominal moment capacity is para dun sa full figure. So, meron tayong dalawang stress diagram. Doon natin kukunin. So, dito sa first stress diagram, si first nominal moment capacity and si second nominal moment capacity. So, sa first diagram, this is T sub S. So, meron tayong compression 1 dyan. Then, this will be tension 1. So, hindi naman natin pwedeng kunin sa tension 1 kasi wala tayong given na ESF. So, let's get all the values of the nominal moment dun sa compression side. So, kunin natin dito. So, this one has a moment arm of D minus TS over 2. So, that means MN sub 1 is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C B F T sub S times D minus T S over 2. So, that will be equivalent now to 0 0.85. F prime C natin na given is that is 20.7 so 20.7 megapascal times B sub F is equivalent to 550. Then, the thickness of slab is 125 times the effective depth na nakuha natin kanina that is 2074 over 5. So, 2074 over 5 minus T, S is 1, 2, 5, divided by 2. So, this should be multiplied by 1 over 1,000 squared. Para maging kilonewton meter. So, MN1 now is equal to, that is 0 0.85 times 20.7 times 550 times 1, 2, 5 times 2074 over 5 minus 125 over 2 divided by 1000 squared. So that will be 426.1619. So this is in kilonewton meter. So this is the first nominal moment capacity of the beam natin. So the second nominal moment capacity will be coming from the second uh, stress diagram. So, for the second stress diagram, meron tayong C2 dito or compression 2, then tension sub 2. Ngayon, ang moment arm natin for this one will be T, uh, D minus TS over 2 minus A over 2. So, that will be MN2 is equal to that is 0.85 F prime C B 
W times A minus T sub S times D minus T S over 2 minus A over 2. So, that will be 0 0.85 F prime C F prime C natin is 20.7 that is 20.7 BW natin is 250 so the value of A is equivalent to A actual natin kanina so that is 143.9652 Minus 125 times yung D natin is 2074 over 5 minus 125 over 2 minus 143.9652 divided by 2. So, times ulit natin ng 1 over 1000 squared. So, the nominal moment capacity or the second nominal moment capacity now will be 85 times 20.7 times 250 times 143.9625 or 9652 9652 minus 1.25 times 2074 over 5 minus 125 over 2 minus 143.9652 divided by 2 divided by 1000 squared. So that is 23.3825 this is in kilonewton meter. So, to get the value of the nominal moment capacity of the beam, that will be MN1 plus MN2. So, the nominal moment capacity of the beam now will be 426.1619 plus 23.385. So, that will be 449.54. So, this is in kilonewton meter. So, para makuha natin yung hinahanap sa item C na ultimate moment capacity, so that will be phi times mn. So, that is just yung phi na nakuha natin kanina, which is 0 0.8761. So, that will be 0 0.8761. That is uh, that will be multiplied to 449.5469. So the value m you now will be equivalent to 0 0.8761 times 449.5469. So that will be 393.848. So, this is in kilonewton meter. So, ito ngayon yung answer for letter C. So, that will be all for this topic on the analysis of T-beams. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So, Butch TV. Like, share, and subscribe. Then, Huwag nyo rin kakalimutan na mag-subscribe kay or sa YouTube channel ni Engineer Nyoro, yung Nyoroskis Engineering Online, as well as dun sa mga colleagues ko sa TIP, uh, kay Carl Ambray, then kay Harry Latina, so yung Civil Engineering TV, so, kindly like, share, and subscribe dun sa mga channels na yun. So, thank you for watching this video. And hope you have get something from the topic.